Hi everyone, uh, my name is Arno, and I'm going to um, tell you about how to build a text processing pipeline. Um, so, uh, to give you some context on me, um, a few years ago, I was, sorry, <laughs> it's quite surprising. Uh, I was um, working on natural language processing at Philly, I was an intern. Uh, after that, I went back to um, Central where I finished my studies. And at that time, uh, I worked on like a side project with some friends. Um, and right now, I'm a data scientist uh, specialized in computer vision at Sikara. Sikara is uh, a startup of around 30 people um, specialized in computer vision solutions. But as I enjoy uh, NLP, I'm still working on that on my, sp my spare time. So. Uh, is anyone here familiar with data science? Yeah, okay, <laughs> a lot more people, unexpected. Uh, so for the other ones, uh, to give you a quick uh, sum up, uh, data science is a cross-field uh, discipline, uh, which is uh, between computer science and domain um, business knowledge and statistics. So. <laughs> So, um, for the one that are not really aware of what it is, basically, when we're speaking of artificial intelligence, uh, of being a um, lot of ifs and regexes, it's more of you're lacking the statistic aspect. And if you're speaking about uh, statistics and um, domain knowledge, we have things like Excel and stuff like that. And uh, the last one is machine learning, which is basically both computer science and statistics. And you will have kind of, um, like, like if you were doing TDDs, test-driven development, you give a lot of examples. And instead of creating the function out of the examples, you will go with um, just running uh, a function that builds the function itself out of the examples. So to sum it up, uh, data science is basically like rule-based and machine learning, and that's what I'm going to speak about right now. So, um, to give you um, a quick story, um, so at Centra, uh, I had to do a project with a bunch of friends. Uh, we decided to go uh, with an issue that we found funny, which is basically on the internet you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of pages like Wikipedia, fandoms, on like stories, and uh, we tried to um, get read those stories and transform them into oops, a graph of relation between characters. So basically we had to detect the characters and find relationships between them. So you will have things like Harry Potter's is um, genies lovers and uh, Hermione and Harry Potter's are friends and Voldemort is the bad guy so he's, an he's the enemy of everybody else. So <laughs> There is a thing uh, we have that differentiates computer science from other science is basically we tend to make a lot of jokes uh, on names. So we have Helk uh, versus uh, the equivalent uh, for other science. Or basically, if you speak about neural network, we have a lot of weird names like YOLO, Tadam, or Albert. Um, so we liked this trend, and we were students, so we had to make fun of that. So we named this project SWAG. Uh, stories with antagonist graph, which is basically we re-engineered the name. So uh, I'm just going to show a few images because I'm not sure we have the time to make a real presentations uh, of the project. Um, so basically, you input um, like whatever story you want to speak or to find about, like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. Uh, it's going to scrap the web, trying to find a lot of pages. Then uh, we're going to work on like different processing, detecting the characters, finding the relations, and you will end up with this kind of matrices and um, relation between the characters, and at last, the graph. So this is basically what we build, uh, and this is what we build when we are students, and we are like something like, I think, eight weeks and a few hours a week to work on this. Honestly, we worked a lot more than that. And I'm still, uh, we, we paused for like something like one year and I'm like, 
going back to it now that I have a little bit more time. So because I find it a really fun way to work on global issues. Um, so how does it work? Uh, so I'm going to go really quick on the architectures because basically it's a bunch of microservices. I was working with a lot of guys that wanted to be um, SRE or things like that, so they love DevOps. So we had something like four or five containers, uh, each one working on uh, a part of it. So the back is communicating with the client with Socket.io and the rest of them are communicating with, through RabbitMQ. So I'm going to focus on the NLP part, which is basically Python, with a lot of uh, NLTK and SpaceE in it, and a lot of both rule-based and other models that I didn't really build, but used. So this is a thing that is really nice now. Um, as the Python is maybe the main community in data science, and in NLP computer vision, mainly, uh, you will have a lot of things to work with without having any data as or like pre-built model with everything for you, which is really cool. So in the case of, in our case, how did we work on that? So basically we worked on a like, kind of layer ways, which I'm going to describe right now. Um, to give you some context, the first version was built in, uh, with NLTK, which is the thing I knew at the time. And right now I'm kind of, uh, swiftly going through to Spacey because it's both really fast and efficient. Uh, to give you an idea, NLTK is really cool because you have a lot of uh, research things uh, for it. So it's basically still a cool thing to do, but Spacey is more uh, ready for industry, I would say. So the first thing we do is entry selections. We will remove things like parody because basically there is a lot of funny parody, but at the same time, it's kind of breaking the results because you will have things like Harry Potter killed Dumbledore's or stories like that, which is basically going to break things. So how we do that, we basically do something really stupid, but quite efficient, I would say. Uh, we find some kinds of parody words, and we just kind of make a ratio of how many of the words is accounted for, and then we go on the wall uh, corpus of text we just scrapped and we kind of threshold the one that kind of are outliers, so the one that have a lot more of both words than the rest of the corpus. So that's kind of basics, rule-based thing, but we have and we need a bunch of those things. Um, I think I'm going to skip regular expression, but you have to know that it's something that is lot used a lot in NLP. Um, so then we go to preprocessing. So basically, uh, we take all the, um, all the raw text we have, and we are going to try to clean it up, because you've got things like uh, arrows or indicators or anchors. So we, we use a lot of regex at that time, because we need clean text to work on, to help the models, basically. So you use a lot of these kind of things. Um, and then you get the text which is clean. Um, the last thing uh, which is part of a real preprocessing in NLP is tokenization. You have to go through um, a text which is a full string to something more simple to use which is tokens. So um, to do it simply, uh, you could do something really basic like just splitting on spaces. Um, and you will have a bunch of issues at the same time, like the dots and things like that, but you want to go further and rather use a pre-made library which created a lot of rules for you and make it easier. So just go with NLTK or Spacey. Um, so then the question is how to break down things into sentences. Uh, the first thing uh, you could do is just split on, oh wait, you just split on um, dots, but you have smarter way to do it. Um, I'm going to skip that. Uh, which is kind of like creating the dependency graph of, um, of the sentence or of the whole text and splitting on that. So things like Spacey are going to do it for you because it's quite complicated to build it from nowhere. So at that time, you've got sentences and you want to find uh, the entities in it. Uh, why do we want to find the entities? Because uh, it's 
basically how we're going to find the characters. So name entity recognition is the task of finding specific kind of entities. Um, right now, I switched from NLTK to Spacey, and I did a lot of annotations, sadly, a lot too much, uh, to get my model to go from something like an accuracy of less than half or something really close to one, I would say. Um, this helps a lot because basically the next thing we have to do is relationship detections. So I cheated by doing kind of an hypothesis, which is a relationship could be described by uh, both two characters and a relation word. Uh, this is a quick hypothesis because basically in a lot of times you won't have this kind of thing for si simple, simply because Sometimes it's the general sentence that describes how people are friendly together. Uh, but how to work on that? Um, so at that time, I didn't have any NER or any way to train it because I didn't have data and I didn't have time to build it. So I basically built a vocabulary, which is a bunch of words related to, um, to a kind of feeling or a kind of relationship. And then, I stem those words and I stem the sentences, so I transformed the sentence into a more malleable way, which help us match. Ten minutes, okay. Uh, which help us match uh, the words in a lot easier way. So we have things like we we find in this sentence uh, things like friend or help, which is friendly words. So right, right after that. Oh. Right after that, we have um, two things. We have the name entity, which are the characters, and we have um, the relation words, which are, which are just things like friend and are related to a kind of relationship. So once again, I did not have no the data, no the time to build um, a complicated model. So basically, I did, so, I did something which was quite simple. I um, kind of creates a distance between um, um, a ration and word at, and average it so that we can score the sentences that have both two characters and a ration between the characters and the ration. So it will be something based on words uh, distance. Uh, so honestly, this is really bad because this is not semantic. So you will have kind of the same result if you say, uh, Dark Vador is Lux Favor or Dark Vador is not Lux Favor, Favor. But you're quite helped on that by the fact that you really have negative sentence on this. And uh, the other thing you don't have is a real relationship. So sometimes something like Lily and James have a son would make you match for uh, parent child relationship between Lily and James. So why does it work? Uh, this work? This work for two good reasons. Uh, first, you've got a good named entity recognition thing. So as soon as you have the characters, you have a good chance to basically find a relation between them. And the other reason is even if it's a weak relationship detection, uh, you will be helped by the lot of data you have in the corpus. So by averaging them, you start to have correct results. So after what we do this weight and sum with a few threshold. And another issue we have is basically we've got um, different characters that could be represented as in different ways. So for example, Voldemort and you know who, or Harry Potter and Harry. So for that, we do uh, both kind of a matching on sentences, which help us. So for example, Voldemort, Aka, you know who would create an alias for Voldemort and you know who. And we would find things like based on words to kind of relate uh, people names. So for example, here, Harry Potter will be matched with Harry because we have only two, one, that match the name in a lot of parts. So to go further, so we have a lot of issues there. Uh, the first one, which is kind of big and we have no real way to solve it right now, is the chronologies of stories. So Relationships are complicated, but they, which, is, which make it even harder. So basically, your characters like Rogue will start to, by being a bad guy, and then he's evolving to be a hero. So this makes uh, averaging really hard. 
Um, the meaning of relationship is not easy. So what is, is fighting related to, okay, is fighting related to enemy or not? Um, this is quite harsh because sometimes we have people that fight just for training and they are friends or they would just like do some friendly fighting or tickling. Um, another thing which is really hard is coherence. So uh, we have something in sentence with, but we build it. So we say it's Harry Potter and he is. So you miss the he is is related to Harry Potter. You got other issue, which is basically when I said before on uh, semantic and the last one is entity leaking, which is kind of an aliasing thing, but on a general corpus because there is a lot of different ways to create characters. For example, Voldemort, Tom Riddle, and you know who. So the first thing to improve is we're going to have to build models, but how to know where to start? Um, basically, we have to find how good we are, which means that we have to find the truth, and we don't really have it yet. So we need to work on things like DBpedia to find, uh, to get the knowledge of who is ready to who in what, which way. And then uh, we can also do a lot of annotation, which is a boring task, but quite necessary. So we will create the relation between the characters. And that's all for me. Thanks. I don't think I will have time to make a real demo, which is taking a lot of time. So. Have you got any question, or don't we have time for that? Okay. Yes. Word of the question: Why would you use different stacks for each step? Like uh, you use Go for scripting and then Node for the backend. Was it any particular? I mean, you could have done that in Python as well. I'm curious why you chose those stacks. Okay. Uh, so he's asking me why we had like a bunch of different technological stacks. Uh, this is a really good question. We didn't have any good reasons. Uh, <laughs> so to be honest, we had like we were eight. We wanted we had um, we didn't have much time, so we had to work uh, together really fast. So basically, we split uh, into different um, stacks into different microservices to make it to be able to work separately. And for the stack part, uh, basically everybody wanted to work on something different. Like, I like Python, but not everybody does. So people were trying to work on things that was interesting for them. So for example, working on RabbitMQ or working on Go, which is the only reason why a part of maybe the efficiency. Any more question? No? 